Hello Star Wars and Unboxing fans, welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba. This is a special episode of uh, Shelf Talk, where we're going to do a little bit of uh, adjusting of our Black Series shelf. If you look back on some past videos, you'll notice that uh, there's a video where I put together a custom shelf like this, pretty simple, and I kind of did a high-speed version of that. And then there was a video just a few uh, blips ago where I um, kind of did a little uh, staircase kind of display for some uh, small Disney figures, and I just wanted to use some of that to put on this shelf. But before I do that, okay, before I do that, I felt it was important um, because at this point, at the point of the release of this video or the recording of this video, Galaxy's Edge in um, Florida has opened. It had its opening day, and it opened to 300 plus um, minute waits for Smuggler's Run and, and upwards to hour waits in just about every other aspect of the park and even to buy popcorn or buy, um, uh, you know, blue milk or green milk or souvenirs or anything else. So I, 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 I saw this and I was watching a lot of the live feed. I did not attend. Uh, I will be getting down there in the, in the fall and winter time. And, uh, I'm sure that the, the initial, hustle and bustle will uh, would have died down, although it'll probably be still crowded because we're going to be there. I think we're going there on Thanksgiving Day itself, so that's going to be fun, but uh, we'll see what happens. But I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit um, about kind of my thoughts on, give you guys my thoughts on the quote-unquote success or quote-unquote failure of Galaxy's Edge. And I speak like this because I want to talk about this because there's just been a lot of um, discussion on the internet, and I've mentioned it in previous videos, there's been discussion about everything from, you know, how Disneyland totally, you know, failed their opening and there's nobody there and it's a ghost, it's a ghost town, not just the Galaxy's Edge, but the rest of the park. And, you know, I had my thoughts about that and I mentioned it, but I, I really feel like it's important to reiterate it because um, I feel like there's a lot going on here uh, with the way Disney kind of rolled things out. Um, first of all, I'm not a, a Disney apologist, nor am I a Disney uh, defender to the end. They're a business, like anything else. Like any other business, they have to make business decisions. And they're certainly not trying to do anything that would be considered a failure. And when they do have things like that happen, they reevaluate and change things up and make make amends and do the best they can to improve it. Um, I don't think Galaxy's Edge falls into the realm of failure by any means. And the reason I don't think that is, well, a lot of reasons. Number one, the way they rolled it out in Disneyland was a really unique way to do it. Um, I don't believe Disney likes to put, and, and, and uh, you know, not to say anything negative about Universal Studios, because I don't go to Universal very often, but I do go from time to time. I do love Harry Potter, so I love that they built that park there. I will say that I've been there twice. Well, I've been there once when it was the first park, and I guess it was Islands of Adventure, and this is down in Orlando. And then I went again uh, a few years later when it was when the other park in the um, I guess Hogwarts, Hogwarts opened in the other park. And I have to say that I enjoyed the experience. I loved the immersion of it, but I wasn't too thrilled with the excessiveness of the weights for everything. Now I understand that that's kind of how things are, and but it wasn't just that. I mean, everything had a huge weight. Um, you could pay an extra fee for the fast pass, a special kind of, you know, express pass that could get you on some of the rides, but that didn't even include the Harry Potter rides at the time. That might've changed now. So my, my thoughts on that were kind of like, you know, I, I, I just didn't feel like to go there for one day was a very enjoyable experience. I'm sure if I was a pass holder, if I spent a lot of time there, I would have enjoyed it better, but I just didn't have that great of a time. I didn't hate it. Uh, and what I saw, what I loved but I just didn't get to see that much. And I've never had that problem in Disney, not because it's not crowded, but because they have things like Fast Pass, Fast Pass Plus, my Disney experience. They have a lot of things that they can do. And plus when we go there, we go for an extended period of time. So we can always um, take in things in small doses and always catch everything we want to catch and do everything we want to do. So it's a, it's a very, it's an apples and oranges comparison to some degree. But I think this one is a little different because, um, Yes, uh, Galaxy's Edge opened with only one attraction per se, meaning only one ride, okay, the Smuggler's, Smuggler's Run. And I understand that, and I get that some people don't like that. They feel like, well, you know, even Harry Potter originally opened with two. 
okay, you know, one was a roller coaster, but they opened with two. So why couldn't Disney have done that? And, I, and, I, and you know, that, that's a valid question. But the other thing I also feel is that they, they are going to have two. They're going to have two state-of-the-art attractions. One of them has never been done before, ever, anywhere. So they're, you know, and I think they made the wise move of saying, you know what, let's open part of the park now because, you know, that'll get the excitement going about it. And then when we open the other one in a negative phase, then then the whole thing will be officially, you know, there. And that, from a business perspective, made sense because you got people coming, perhaps coming in August, or in the case of Disneyland, coming in May. And you get the um, interest to come back again. Or, for people that weren't going to go right away, they may come in this, they may come in the wintertime. And then you get more people coming in the summer. Well, if you think about it, if you held off and just opened everything at Christmas, first of all, you're opening everything at Christmas, which is like a crazy time to open anything. But also, you are essentially you know, dooming the fall and the, and the summer and the late summer because from people coming because they're like, well, we're just going to wait until the winter or wait until the following summer. So it's a business. They have to do their best. So I get that from a business perspective. Now, um, as far as what they've done, though, Disneyland versus Disney World. Okay, Disneyland opens. Now, first of all, people who think about Disney parks, okay, do not put Disneyland and Disney World in the same place. They're not. They're not even on the same planet, honestly. Okay, Disneyland was a park that was open. It was the first kind of among the first types of the theme park, certainly the first Disney theme park. And it did a lot of innovative things, but they did not have a lot of space. It's a tiny, tiny park. If you've never been there, it's almost surreal. It's like walking in miniature land, okay? Because you walk, I mean, I will say this, Main Street USA between the two areas, Flor Florida and Anaheim, pretty much the same, okay, in terms of um, space. But once you walk in to get, get closer to the castle, if you want to go to Tomorrowland and go on Space Mountain in Walt Disney World of Florida, you have to walk a ways, like maybe all close to a quarter mile, to get to Space Mountain. You want to walk to Space Mountain on Disneyland, you walk like a handful of steps, and you're there. You see it, and it's crazy. So it's a little surreal to do that for the first time if you're not used to it. My point is, though, in that sense, that Disneyland is a local park. It has a lot of local crowd. People don't vacation in Disneyland. Why? Because you can do Disneyland in two, maybe three days. And people usually vacation for a week. Okay, yes, they try to get you there for a week. But two parks, no water park, nothing else. Just two parks, a couple of hotels. I mean, you know, uh, what else? You know, in Anaheim, there's not much there. I mean, L.A. is something, but, you know, it's L.A. Some people don't want to go to L.A. So Anaheim, it, it just doesn't offer a week-long or a two-week-long vacation. Okay, unless you're tagging it on, like doing a California trip or something. So I think that many people were either saying, well, it opens in May, but I'm planning a trip to Disney World, and that opens in August, so I'll just go then. Or they're saying, well, it opens in, you know, it opens then, but yeah, I want to wait until the other ride opens. There's all these but, but, but reasons to not go right away. So they did not, and not only that, but Disney did block out cast members they block out some annual pass members i think they lifted some of that but there you go so there's a lot of people that would want to go that weren't even allowed in so there you go and they did that whole thing where you had to to um either and stay in a hotel for like the first month so there was a lot that they were really doing to suppress that and they did so and they were successful with that okay they also knew that disney world I'm sorry, folks. I go to Disney World a lot. I go to, I, I am there for two to three weeks every summer. I go usually on a weekend, another time of the year, at least that much. And they have much more even this year. I take, the, I take my band down there, my orchestra down there for trips. I can tell you right now, it's immensely crowded. And there are no, and now they may have their ups and downs in comparison to other years, but they're still the most crowded parks anywhere in the continental United States. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's been... That's been, you know, there's no argument there. So they're always crowded, okay? So for Disney to try to do anything to try to suppress that or steer them a different way and do all these things, they're going to do what they got to do. They're going to do what they got to do as a business. First day of Galaxy's Edge was a mob scene, but I think that that was more about the energy of being there on the first day. I wish I could be there. I do. I'm sorry I wasn't there to some degree, okay? Um, but it just wasn't able for me to happen. But I enjoyed watching the massive crowds. But I would not want those massive crowds to be there forever. Because when I go, not only when I go in Thanksgiving, if we go in Christmas time, or if we go in the summer next year, we do not want to be waiting 300 minutes for a ride if we can avoid it. 
So I really hope that they're, they're able to manage it or have a single rider system or have a boarding pass thing where you can do that. But honestly, for people to think that it's a failure, I really feel is clickbait. I feel that it's people that don't like Disney. They want to, they don't like the Lucasfilm, the Disney Lucasfilm acquisition. They don't like Star Wars. I mean, I'm, look, you can, have, you can have your opinion, but if you haven't liked Star Wars since The Empire Strikes Back, with 10 movies and an 11th one coming out, is that right? Right? We have episode 8 plus two standalones. Not, not to mention, you know, the Ewok movies and Clone Wars. I mean, with 10 movies, if you only like two, um, maybe you're more of a fan of Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back than you are of Star Wars, the film, the film franchise. Just saying. I'm not saying you're not a fan. But if it's really limited to just those two and you don't like the prequels and you don't like the Disney acquisition movies, I don't know. I mean, it's time to move on. You know, find another franchise or get on board. I'm not saying you have to love everything. You don't. But, you know, I think that they all offered something awesome. And there's a lot of people out there, man. A lot, especially a lot of 20-somethings, 30-somethings that love the prequels. Um, you know, that are that are forgiving of the things that are weird or, or didn't make sense. Or, you know, quote-unquote, not the best acting. Whatever you want to say. They're, they're a little bit more, you know, charming about it right now. So, anyway... Um, I love what Galaxy. I love what Disney did with Galaxy's Edge. I think it's a huge success. I think that they themselves are saying that they're not looking at what happens in the. They're not. They're not looking at this like a film, and I think that's where a lot of people are making errors. They are trying to uh, compare this as if you as if you would an opening film. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay, theme park attractions, right? They have a, le a lengthy shelf life. You want length of them. If that if that ride, if Smuggler's um, Smuggler's Run, is empty, you know, day after day, week after week, month after month, for an extensive period of time, and there's nothing that they can do to get that to be better, that would be considered a failure. But otherwise, if that if there's even a a steady crowd of people or a small line for that, and to get into other places like Ogus Cantina, or whatever, no, that was a success. And you and if you if you want to argue that, feel free to do so in the comments. I respect your opinion. I will. I might respectfully disagree with it, but you know you're welcome to put your comments in the post. Anyway, so congratulations to Disney. Congratulations to Lucasfilm for an amazing Galaxy's Edge. I cannot wait to get there. Uh, when I do, I will post videos about it. But for the moment, we are. Um, I've taken a few minutes to talk about that. Thank you so much for your patience. Now let's talk about this. So as I said, if you look over here, I'm going to actually move myself around here. And again, I'm sorry for my my uh, little bit of sweatiness here, but it was. Uh, it is kind of humid in our space here. But if you look here. I remember a couple of episodes ago, we put we built little shelvings here to do here. Well, I have extra, so I thought it would be nice to try to kind of enhance some of the shelving that I have here. If you look here, you'll notice, and I didn't put a backdrop on this one. I didn't put a black backdrop. It's just the we have kind of like a, a yellowish, goldish kind of coloring on the wall. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of space here. So to try to get some of these figures in the back to be better displayed, I'm going to try to put some of these things up. Now I have essentially three shelves. So I can, I'm going to do the top three. Okay. So I'll put this on high speed. Okay. So you can just, you'll just, you can see me layer each one and we'll see how they look. All right. So here we go. see that we are able to get a little bit better view of the figures in the back okay um oops, sorry my angle here is a little off uh, i gotta get this looking better here okay there we go all right so we were able to get a little bit of the higher figures at the back just a slight improvement i probably could get another level in there for some of these figures it looks like i have a few inches so i might try that same thing with the second rummy, you know, obviously K2SO can't go up any further. Um, 
the Death Trooper too. But I think everybody else could probably stand another, another, um, you know, thing. Um, I'd probably just stack it up and still keep it at two, just because it's a pretty thin shelf. But the shelf itself is only, in, in, or I shouldn't say it's not that deep. You can see, like, you know, the other characters are kind of standing, you know, in front and stuff. So I can definitely do this if you look at the third shelf, you know, definitely, um, you know, it, it, it tightened up the spots a little bit. I can actually fit, uh, fit a few extra figures in there if I'd like. I moved Chopper. Chopper was up here, up top. So I moved him down. I tried to get things like, you know, here's Chopper, here's... Here's a uh, Kanan. I was trying to do like a Rebels little section. Up here, it's it's in the back. Over here, it's Rogue One. And then some Return of the Jedi and a little, well, I just threw Lando in there twice. But uh, I guess you could argue that uh, uh, up here, a lot of this in the back is uh, all of the solo figures and kind of pulling around to the front along with just some random ones. It's hard to, it's hard to do like full out sets because... Um, well, essentially, it becomes an issue just because some sets release, you know, some movies will release 20 figures and other movies will release five. So, you know, it makes it a challenge. So that's my Shelf Talk and Galaxy's Edge Talk episode. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, tell everybody about the channel, people who like this kind of thing. I'd love to get some more subscribers. It creeps up a little bit each, each week. Thank you so much. Before we go, I do want to talk about, since this really isn't an unboxing, there were two new Hallmark uh, itty bitties that were released. We have Lando and Lobot. Uh, these are figures I did not have prior to now. So, um, they will kind of go in a little section over there. You can see on the shelf, that's a, if you look in the middle there, there's a nice little, in fact, I will go and do that right now while I'm talking to you. All right. So we will put, uh, Lando here. We'll put Lobot here. They also came out with a Chewbacca. Sorry for the break this time. Uh, they came out with a Chewbacca Halloween one, where the Chewbacca, instead of having a bandolier with ammunition, has a bandolier with candy corn. Kind of cute. So, uh, but that's upstairs and, you know, something to put out for the upcoming Halloween season. So, that'll do it. So, once again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, do all that other stuff, and there will be more episodes coming. And we have some new, uh, newer high-end items coming in the mail shortly, along with some older stuff that we want to unbox just for, you know, for reasons of space and uniqueness. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, may the force be with you.